Okay, thank you. So, um, so I didn't manage last night to prepare slides for today. So, well, we'll we'll start with what there is and and see what happens. Um, and in particular, the few slides that I did prepare, I'm pretty sure, are not yet posted on the website. So, but that will happen later today. So this is the last slide that I showed last time. Uh, it sort of gave the Harishandra's formulation of the problem of what non-unitary representations one should look at. Um, so um, the um, so, so the big definition was that a, a representation is quasi-simple if the center of the enveloping algebra acts by scalars on the smooth vectors. Um, and then there's this theorem of Harishandra uh, that, that says that an irreducible quasi-simple representation uh, gives you by taking k finite vectors, k finite smooth vectors, gives you an irreducible GK module. Um, and I, I well, I'll, I'll, it's on the next slide, I think. Um, um, the, an important point is to define equivalence of representations. Uh, and so, so the definition Harishandra made is that two representations are, are called infinitesimally equivalent if their Harishandra modules are isomorphic. And then the symbol I've been writing for some time without being precise about what it was, now I'll be precise. This is the infinitesimal equivalence classes of irreducible, quasi-simple, uh, representations of this real group. And so what Harishandra's theorems say is that that's exactly the set of simple modules for this Hecke algebra R of GK. And Jeff has uh, emphasized this atlas point of view that instead of talking about a real Lie group G of R, we keep track only of a complex Lie algebra G, and this K, which is uh, a complex reductive algebraic group. Uh, so everything here uh, on the right-hand side, these are the, the things that Atlas pays attention to. Uh, so, well, that, that's, that's nice. OK. so. What I was supposed to do today was talk in, in some detail about the Langlands classification, and I, I certainly didn't get slides made for that, and I'm, I'll, I'll see where I get. Um, what I want to start with, which is important in any case, is what this atlas point of view looks like on the level of Cartan subgroups. So, the, a complex algebraic torus is uh, a, a product of copies of the multiplicative group of C. The, the natural statement, well, th this has come up uh, several times. is that if H uh, is a complex torus, um, well, the most important lattice that we attach to it, uh, it is this lattice of algebraic characters. Um, and, and this is the algebraic group homomorphisms from H to C cross. And this is um, 
this is a finitely generated free abelian group. So, um, well, and we also make use of this dual lattice. Um, so so the, the term that's used, uh, I, yes, it's going to break my heart. No, ah, okay. This, this is called the character lattice. Uh, or or it, it's sometimes called the weight lattice. And this x lower star of, of h is the algebraic group homomorphisms in the other direction. So, so this is called the, the lattice of one parameter subgroups. Well, in the world of Lie groups, so one, the collection of one parameter subgroups is a vector space, but we're, we're looking at algebraic group homomorphisms, and actually from C cross and not from, from R. Um, so it, anyway, it's a lattice instead of a, a vector space. Um, and and this, this one is called uh, the, the co-character or, or, or co-weight lattice. Um, okay, uh, and, and what I wanted to say is that you can reconstruct the, the torus from either of these lattices uh, th this is uh, C cross tensored over Z with X lower star uh, of H, which is the same as, as Hom over Z of um, X upper star of H into C cross. Um, so these are really elementary facts, but they're really important. Um, so the, the, the first point here, well, we're, we're working all the time with uh, basing everything on, on the compact real form. So this reductive algebraic group H has a compact real form. And the nice thing about abelian is that the uh, compact real form is in fact unique. The uh, complex structure uh, on, on this uh, torus can be written in this way. On, on the C cross variable, you use conjugate inverse. And on the lattice, you don't do anything. That, that's the compact real form. And if you take the, the fixed points of that, well, the, the fixed points of, of z goes to z bar inverse, that's just uh, the unit circle in the complex in, in C cross. Um, and, uh, well, so, so you're tensoring the unit circle with uh, a, a lattice of rank n, and so you get n copies of the unit circle. Um, and the way Atlas thinks of things is, is to describe all the other real forms in terms of the compact real form. So if you have any other real form that, that's specified by an involutive automorphism of H. And um, as Jeff mentioned yesterday, the automorphism group of, of H is isomorphic to the automorphism group of, of x lower star uh, of, of h. Uh, so, so, so this is something that, that's completely natural. And uh, this, uh, well, it, it, if, you, if you choose a basis, 
it, it's it's GLNZ. So, sorry, these uh, these automorphisms are uh, something simple. I mean, in the Atlas world, our our, our fixed torus will always well, this lattice will always be identified with Zn, and and so. As Jeff said, writing down an automorphism means writing down an n by n integer matrix. And here we're interested in n by n integer matrices of order 2. Anyway, once you write down such an automorphism, you get um, a, a real form. Well, I didn't write the real form. Uh, I mean, I, I wrote the relationship between the real form and, uh, and, and theta. The, the other uh, part of this it, it, it is that the real form is uh, in, in other words sigma of uh, Z tensor C is Z bar inverse uh, tensored with uh, theta of, of C. Um, so that, that's what a real form of a torus looks like. The, the maximal compact subgroup for this real form is the group of fixed points of theta, of, and it, that, that's the intersection of, of, of the, the new real form and the compact real form. Uh, the, the complexification of, of this uh, compact real form. Uh, so, so this T of R is, is what I've been calling K of R for, for reductive groups. Uh, its complexification is just the fixed points of theta on H. So the next slide has a million examples of all these things, I think. Um, so, We're doing everything, well, with what I said was based on the polar decomposition for matrices, the, the Cartan decomposition for uh, a real group. On the level of this real Lie algebra, you're decomposing the real Lie algebra into the plus one and minus one eigenspaces of theta. And those are often called T and A. Uh, so, so, well, the, this T is just the Lie algebra of the group T on the previous slide. A means the minus one eigenspace of theta on, on the real Lie algebra. And the, the Cartan decomposition for the group says that the group is this maximal compact subgroup times the exponential of, of this other part. Um, what's wonderful about abelian groups is that this is actually a group isomorphism, not just a topological space isomorphism. Um, it, it, it's not an isomorphism of algebraic groups that this uh, set, well, in the, in the literature, this set X of A of R is often written A, but I don't want to do that because when we write an unadorned A, you're supposed to think that's a complex algebraic group. And this isn't. It, it isn't a real algebraic group either. I mean, there is a real algebraic group, A of R, uh, which is the uh, group element, the real group elements that are, are sent to their negatives by theta. but. Uh, the, this exponential is only the identity component of that. So, so here are some examples. Uh, if my complex group is C cross with Cartan involution acting by inverse, then the group of real points is R cross. Maximal compact subgroup is plus or minus one. And this X of A of R is uh, x, well, it's the positive real numbers. If uh, 
Again, the complex group is C cross, but theta is, is the identity. That's, of course, the compact case. The, the real form is S1, which is the maximal compact subgroup. That's the way it, what did I do? Uh, th there should only be one e to the i s here. Oh, sorry about that. And and there's no minus one eigenspace of of theta. Uh, if the complex group is C cross times C cross and and theta interchanges the factors then the group of real points is C cross. The maximal compact subgroup is this guy. And the, the minus one eigenspace of, of um, I have a feeling I did that wrong also. I did. Yeah, let, let me rewrite that last line correctly. Um, well, so uh, uh, and, and then uh, theta z w if it's w z. Uh, then, then I get the real points are c cross, which is the things. Um, Z and Z bar inverse. Um, I think now this is correct. And, and then uh, the maximum compact subgroup it is a set of uh, e to the i s. Yeah, it, it, it's it's these guys. Um, and, and the, um, well, so in, in fact, the last entry was correct. Um, uh, yeah, so, so the, 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 this is, well, the labels on the bottom, the Cartan involution, uh, the, the, the real points. Um, the, the maximal compact and um, the well, the, the, this, this thing. Okay, um, so these three examples are worth understanding because every real algebraic torus is isomorphic to some product of uh, these three factors. And in fact, the, the number of factors of each kind is a, an invariant of, of the torus. Um, well, yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna mess with that, but certainly when, when Atlas is telling you about Cartan subgroups of a reductive group, it says you've got this many factors for R cross, this many S1s, and this many C crosses, and well, th this is what's going on. Okay, so what we want to do is representation theory, so we want to understand the characters of, of such a group. So I've got my, my real Cartan written as a compact group, and uh, this, this exponential is a, a, a group isomorphism from the Lie algebra A of R to, uh, to, to that. So a character of this compact group is, well, again, I, I talked about characters for, well, I talked about representations for <coughs> arbitrary compact Lie groups. I, I said that um, a, a representation of a compact Lie group was given by the restriction of an algebraic representation of its complexification. We got that here. The complexification is h upper theta. And, and so the unitary characters of T of R 
are the restrictions of algebraic characters of H upper theta. Well, uh, the uh, what what what's true is, is that characters of, of, of a subgroup uh, are well. This is in the algebraic world. Algebraic characters of a subgroup are, are restrictions of, of characters of the big group. And, and so they're the same thing as characters of the big group divided by characters uh, restricting to, to one. So to describe the, the characters of T, I have to look at all characters of H, which is this lattice x upper star, and I have to divide by the characters that restrict to be trivial on the fixed points of theta. And, and that's exactly the image of 1 minus theta on x upper star. Um, Uh, the, the, Sorry. Yes. Uh, uh, re restricting uh, to be trivial uh, on, on the subgroup. So uh, here, here's an example. Um, so. If I take R cross inside C cross, then the maximal compact subgroup is plus or minus 1, which is actually equal to its own complexification. Um, and, well, so, so the characters of, of C cross uh, are, are given by, by integers of uh, lambda sub m of, of z is, is z to the m. Uh, and, and so the characters of, of this group plus or minus 1 uh, are, are given by, well, it, it, it's z mod 2z. Uh, that they're, they're uh, again, that they're given by, well, lambda sub m of epsilon is a, a epsilon to the m. You, you restrict of a, a, a character, sorry, sorry for, um, uh, so, so here, uh, theta it is, Minus the identity, um, and and the, this the, this thing here is, is z divided by one minus theta z. So that's the that's the picture. Uh, I I mention all of these things in so much detail because this is the way you interact with Atlas. In, in Atlas, you, you need to, well, if you want to talk about <clears throat> principal series for a split group, you need to describe characters of a product of R crosses. And, well, so in particular, you have to say what, what the plus or minus one elements do. And, and this is how you say it. Uh, you, you give a, a string of integers, and the integers only matter up to parity, but, but that, that's, the, that's the story. So we'll, we'll see a lot of this interaction. Uh, well, so in addition to this character of the compact group, uh, I need uh, 
a, a character of the Lie algebra, of, of, and that's just the linear functional on the, the Lie algebra, a complex valued linear functional. And the way you get these complex valued linear functionals on the Lie algebra is you take the differentials of characters and you tensor that with the complex numbers. <clears throat> so what I said for, for general real reductive groups was that I could identify representations with GK modules. So, so here, characters of this uh, real torus are given by one-dimensional HT modules. So to specify the, the character on T, I have to give, well, I have to give a character of T, and I also need uh, a, a character of the, the Lie algebra H, and I, I forgot in the first line to put this compatibility requirement, the, the uh, phi restricted to T has to be the differential uh, of uh, gamma. So I forgot to write that requirement in the, the uh, first, what do I uh, in this first line, but it appears in the second line, you know, as I say, the, the way I describe gamma is as the restriction of a character of H, uh, and, and the way I describe V is as the complexification of an element of X star. And here, I, I put this restriction requirement um, like that. And the way um, that, that Atlas keeps track of these things is more or less by this, this last formula. I, I take this, this lambda bar in this quotient of two lattices, and I also take nu bar in, in a different quotient. I, I take the, the quotient by one plus theta instead of one minus theta, and, and I tensor with C. So this new bar is, is, is in a vector space. Anyway, um, the, the way uh, the, this, the way you get the phi uh, out of these two things is uh, by, well, it's by this formula. So again, this is the way Atlas, th this is the way you enter a parameter in Atlas. You, you tell Atlas uh, this, this weight lambda, and Atlas forgets about, you know, Atlas only considers the coset, and you tell Atlas a weight new, but with, with complex coordinates. Uh, I mean, well, I'll, I'll, I'll correct that in a moment. Uh, you, you, you take this weight new, and Atlas forgets about the, the one plus theta part. Atlas just remembers one minus theta. So, yes? What if um, this is like some convention that the minus sign is on you? Yes, Sorry. What the, is the, oh, the bar. Uh, the, the idea is that lambda is an element of X upper star that represents uh, this coset. So that, that, that's, you, you know, when you talk to Atlas, you hand it always an n-tuple of integers or something. And, and that, that's, that's lambda, that you, you hand it this n-tuple, but What's, what it cares about is the image in this quotient. And so lambda bar it means the, the coset. Um, so the idea is this lambda bar it is lambda uh, plus 
1 minus theta at x upper star. Well, so, so this is that, that, that's oops. Uh, that's the the picture. <coughs> That's that, that's exactly right. Um, so what what Mark says is, is that this quotient up here is a little bit subtle. This is a quotient of two lattices, and while well, it, it might have something like z mod two z in it, um, this second quotient is a vector space and so it, it's just you can it, just identify it with the minus one eigenspace of theta uh, on this vector space oh. okay so well I inside all of these characters you you can look at the ones where this this phi uh, is rational. So, well, it means rational with respect to the split form of the carton. And anyway, it means that instead of tensoring with C, you just tensor with Q. <coughs> and, and so, um, is 